You might say the world is like a giant delicatessen. Some foods are certainly cheap and within everyone's reach. Herbs, the leaves of the trees or marine algae are devoured by thousands of different species and millions of individuals every day. However, some foods are difficult to come by and very scarce. Some simply aren't appetizing to almost anyone and only a few diners enjoy their acquired tastes. It's true that some dishes are authentically exquisite, real delights of intense flavors, sweet, spicy or salty. But other foods are, without dispute, simply repugnant, even when taken in small portions. Little strips of cadaver flesh, fungi, sprouts of different plants, forest berries, ants and termites filled with eggs, thick, meaty worms. The most expensive and prized products in a delicatessen are the rare ones, the most difficult to get or the most complicated to prepare. Nature produces some foods that can only be eaten a few days a year, and these are highly sought after. Other meals are hidden underground, and a great effort is needed to reach them. Some are hidden under the sea, in the colorful storefront display of the coral reefs. Tropical mangles and river mouths make up the warm abode of an exceptional connoisseur. In these waters glides a mysterious animal that long ago was confused for a mermaid. In fact, the scientific name of their group is Sirenidas, though their appearance is nothing like a beautiful long-haired maiden with a magical voice. Manatees are placid herbivores, fully adapted for the aquatic life they live, a peaceful, lazy life in the shallow waters. They're full-bodied animals of some three meters in length, weighing around 500 kilos. The largest ones can weigh a ton and a half and reach almost six meters. Despite their size and corpulence, they're quite agile in the water and they can be observed doing flips, spins, or swimming upside down. Their skin, covered in fine wrinkles, is five centimeters thick and almost hairless to prevent the proliferation of algae and parasites. They only have a couple of flexible front limbs, like flippers, that they use to glide along the floor, caress each other, or hold and push food while they're foraging. Actually, they spend most of their time searching for riverside plants close to the surface or diving down to the floor in shallow water searching for algae. It's known that they're very picky when it comes to choosing their menu. They feed on at least 60 species of plants, including mangrove leaves and seagrasses, which make up their main food source. This preference for algae and seagrasses and the meaty flat shape of their snout have earned them the nickname sea cow. 
but the manatee has a split, very sensitive upper lip. This is useful for picking out the plants they love the most. Their diet includes highly abrasive vegetation, so their teeth wear out quite quickly and get replaced multiple times throughout their lifetime. Adult manatees need to ingest about 50 kilos of food per day, which is about 10% of their body weight. Manatees are very sensitive to cold. Sudden temperature drops cause a high mortality rate due to cold shock. In the northernmost areas of their distribution, many of them die because their digestive tract closes up when water temperatures drop below 20 degrees Celsius. Golden snub-nosed monkeys are native to the cold woods in the interior of China. Their home is found in the deciduous woods that grow between an altitude of 1,500 and 3,500 meters. These are, therefore, mountain monkeys. They are tree-dwelling by custom, and they spend much of their time clinging to the tree branches along with the other members of their tribe, which can be over 600 strong. They're distinguished by their striking fur, very warm, to stand the mountain climate, and also by the blue color of their face, exceptional among mammals. Golden monkeys are picky eaters, and they're always looking for dishes that are in season which means their diet changes depending on the time of year. They have a favorite dish for every season. Although they're at home in the trees, they also descend to the ground in search of food. Biologists have studied the feeding habits of the golden monkey in great depth. They've compiled lists of the foods they eat depending on where they live. In the forests of Shenongjia, their favorite delicacy are lichens, new leaves, fruits, mature leaves, tree bark and flowers. But they've also observed that their diet, showing a preference for certain foods, varies greatly depending on location and season. When spring arrives, the lichens are put on the back burner and they happily eat tender leaves. In the summer, they prefer eating fresh fruit rather than lichens. However, the golden monkeys of the King Muchuan Reserve despise lichens and during the winter, they look for the last of the leaves and above all, they feed on sprouts and are content to munch on tree bark of all kinds. Large groups sit around patiently on the ground or in the tree branches, spending long hours nibbling the branches to eat off the tender bark. Young and old, all of them eat great quantities of delicious winter tree bark. The anteater is certainly a singular animal. Its tiny head, which is drawn out in a long, thin snout, is an odd sight. Notable on the opposite side is its enormous tail, very thick, made up of long, thick hairs which seem to wave in the wind. In fact, 
They're often referred to as flag bears in Brazil and Argentina. This strange mammal is not in reality related to bears. They and the small tamanduas that climb through the trees form an exclusive group that feed on ants and termites. Known as myrmecophages, which literally means eaters of ants. It's hard to believe they can weigh up to 40 kilos on such a limited diet. Another peculiar feature is their front paws, which have five very distinct toes. Their paws have toes with strong curved nails, and on the back they have a padding that helps them walk, since they stand on their knuckles. They're tough and resilient as they walk through the grassy plains. Three of their toes have very large, sharp claws that they use to open termite and ant mounds. Their tiny eyes don't see well, so they depend on their excellent sense of smell to find termite at anthills. Their snout is long with a small mouth found right at the end. Out of their mouth shoots a very long cylindrical tongue, up to 60 centimeters in length, that allows it to penetrate into the earth to catch the insects that make up its daily menu. The tongue is coated in an adherent sticky substance that makes it easier to catch their favorite delicacy. This amazingly long tongue has also earned them the nickname vermilingua, that is, worm tongue. Another peculiar feature of this animal is that they lack teeth because their exclusive menu doesn't require chewing. Among the animals with the finest palates, we also find some deer species. From the forests of Central Europe to the wildest mountains of the Iberian Peninsula, the small and elusive roe deer searches for a delicious, nutritious meal. They frequent meadows enclosed by woods, beech thickets and chestnut groves, as well as moors and mountain meadows and even farmlands. The roe deer is a very flexible animal, capable of living in mountains, meadows or woods. The roe deer appears to have only a couple of non-negotiable conditions for colonizing an area. There has to be a variety of plants and enough water for tender, nutrient-rich shoots to form. Apart from that, they prefer terrains with a mosaic of woods and farmlands with well-developed plant populations, that is, a good selection of herbs, bushes and trees. Unlike most European deer species, which are gregarious, roe deer form small family groups or wander alone through the different regions they inhabit. But no matter where they are, roe deer won't settle for just any meal. In the Iberian Peninsula, they're known to eat at least 191 different plant species, of which leaves are their favorite part, meaning this is a customer of the forest delicatessen that prefers leaf browsing to grazing. Their diet consists of the leaves of bushes and shorter trees, as well as tender shoots. In spring and summer, their consumption of wild herbs increases, and in the fall, they eat more grass. 
It's also been found that their diet includes 12% forest berries. There's a reason for the way they eat and the delicacies they seek out, having to do with their stomach. The roe deer's stomach volume is under 6%, while their larger relative, the red deer's, is 15%. On the other hand, it means they have to eat frequently throughout the day. They can't just eat one meal. Their cycles of activity vary, and each day they have to eat between 8 and 12 times. The Bosca's newt is an amphibian with a very aquatic lifestyle. They love staying underwater for quite a long time. This is a glutton of an animal, despite its tiny size, which doesn't surpass 10 centimeters in length. Their favorite habitats are ponds of calm waters, small pools, and springs or basins. Here they find everything they need and a sufficiently varied menu for their culinary desires. Bosca's newts love eating aquatic insects and pursue them tirelessly. It's an agile, quick animal underwater that can hunt almost any kind of small bug, like beetles and fly and dragonfly larvae. Although they won't turn up their nose at anything that falls into the water, they make quick attacks to catch their food. But in the case of this wayward worm, this one won't need speed, its prey is lost in the water. There's just one problem. The worm is just as long as the newt. It's easy to swallow at first, but soon after, it turns out its stomach is a bit too small. A worm may not seem like a delicacy, but its texture is soft and buttery. Its meat is creamy and easy to digest, and underwater, it's a rarity that these newts almost never get to taste. Eating worms has its advantages, as they have little cholesterol and their light muscles have lots of minerals and a high protein content three times as much as beef. In the mountains and rivers for much of the year can be found a great traveler distinguished as the finest and most delicate of all vultures. The Egyptian vulture, or pharaoh's chicken, nests in the rock crags. There they rest from their long journeys, mate, and spend the season raising young. This is a very special vulture, both for its lifestyle and for its diet. Their appearance stands out among carrion feeders. They're the smallest of them all, with a wingspan of only a meter and a half. But it's their lovely white color and yellow faces that really stand out. And they appear to have a strange mane that turns wider as they reach maturity, at about five years of age.
Their fine long beak isn't as strong as those of the large vultures. Clearly they can't cut or tear apart the skin of cows or sheep. And they have to wait while the rest of the stronger, larger vultures stuff themselves with the larger pieces of food. Then comes the Egyptian vulture's turn. When the other vultures have filled up and gone on their way, Egyptian vultures can begin their peculiar meal. Perhaps the scattered remains of a hog or a sheep don't make good fare for a delicatessen, but Egyptian vultures think of them as a real delicacy. They spend ages searching, rummaging and tracking down every little bit of meat. It's certainly noteworthy to see a vulture using its claws with so much patience and expertise. They're capable of moving earth, almost like chickens, in search of little culinary treasures, like bits of hide or tendons. Their maneuvers also give them an opportunity to catch a few insects, snails, and even small reptiles like Iberian wall lizards, which enrich their diet. This capacity to search through the land and look for small and delicious food items allows them to take advantage of delicatessens when they occasionally come across them. Nests with eggs or remains of very small animals like roadkill rats or hedgehogs. The ocean also contains a great lunch counter full of delicious foods. Humans find some of the most prized foods in the ocean waters like urchins, lobsters or oysters. However, the loggerhead sea turtle has a longer list of delicacies. Although its name in Spanish, tortuga boba, means dumb turtle, there's nothing stupid about this sea turtle. Loggerhead turtles live in the planet's warm oceans and seas and go on long journeys following the ocean currents. In their travels on the open sea, it appears they eat jellyfish, mollusks and floating eggs, especially squid and flying fish eggs. They almost always swim alone, close to the surface, although they can dive down to over a hundred meters deep. But this turtle is heading to one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on Earth. A place full of delicious foods of all kinds. It's swimming straight for a coral reef in the Caribbean Sea. The loggerhead turtle spends most of its life in marine ecosystems and estuaries. The males never leave the ocean and the females only go onto the beach to lay eggs for a few hours. They're omnivorous, and right now this one is after something good at the reef. The turtle's mandibles are large and powerful, with a beak shape and a hard cutting edge. They're like a pair of shears, perfectly capable of dismantling foods as hard as the coral itself, with a consistency similar to rock. Corals can be delicious, despite their hardness, as they contain tiny, soft-bodied polyps that are often associated with algae. In the front part of the esophagus, next to the mouth, they have buds covered in mucus that point inwards and filter foreign bodies. The next area down of the esophagus has no buds, just lots of mucousy folds that help pull food in. Their digestion speed appears to be related to temperature and increases as the water temperature increases.
Loggerhead turtles principally feed on invertebrates that live on the water's surface, like snails and bivalves, always protected by hard shells, along with octopi and squid. On the ocean floor, they find a luxurious delicatessen counter that ends up right in their stomach. Sponges, polycati worms, sea anemones, barnacles, isopods, sea urchins, and starfish, and even fish. The world is a restaurant, and delicatessens full of rarities and luxuries are actually quite common. Almost everyone can have some. You just have to know where to look.